Please turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verses 41 to 47 for today's sermon. Reading from verse 41. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. How can ye believe we shall receive honor one of another? And seek not the honor that cometh from God only. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrought of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? May Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. Let us look to the Lord one more time in prayer before we study this portion. Lord Heavenly Father, thank you for ministering to us thus far through this worship service. Even assuring us from the scriptures that Lord, you are merciful and you are gracious to forgive us of our sins. Lord, as we continue to meditate upon thy word, Lord, speak to us, Lord. Lord, take away our distractions. May thy Holy Spirit grant us understanding and illumination so that we will apply the truths that we hear. And may thou grant us discernment so that we will be preserved from the attacks of the evil one and even from the false teachings around us, Lord. Grant us help. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. In this portion that we read, we can see the characters of prophets that the Lord sent, whom the Lord appointed, called and sent, and also the false prophets. And then we can see an account of two prophets, at least mentioned here, Moses and also the ministry of Lord Jesus. So through these verses, we will meditate on uh, these things, who is a false prophet, who is a true prophet, and what is the difference in the ministry of, particularly the prophetic ministry of Moses and Jesus as true prophets sent from the Lord. First, let us look at the characters of false prophets. And here, Jesus is speaking as a true prophet sent from God. We know Jesus is not only a prophet, he is also a priest, he is also a king, the one and only mediator who came down to reveal God to us. And one major ministry of Jesus is to bring God's word to us. So all the messages, all the sermons, the preaching ministry of Lord Jesus, through all that, the Lord is bringing God's revelation to us. And the function of a true prophet is to bring what God has revealed to us. And when they minister, when they minister among the people, it is important that they speak exactly what God has given to them. But when we read the Bible, we can see even during Jesus' ministry or even in the Old Covenant when the prophets ministered, they were always false prophets who claimed that they are from God, who claim that they have a word from God, but yet what they thought or what they claimed was not true. And they deceived many people. And one of the main characters of such false prophets is they seek honor from men or they seek the praise of men. So sometimes the purpose for which they are engaged in this prophetic ministry or saying that I am an ambassador of Christ or I am a messenger of God. And one of the motives that they have in engaging in this ministry is to get honor from men, get praise from men. You know, whenever somebody says, I am talking on behalf of God, I am sent by God, then a great number of people especially those who don't have much discernment, they will be easily lured by their words. 
and then they will start to follow their teachings then they will start to donate lot of money to them and then maybe slowly slowly they will propagate all their wrong teachings and they will get influenced by all that and in the whole life some of the followers of this false prophet they will live in deception and we in our times we are not free from such false prophets and false messengers who look for the honor from men who look for the praises from men and even among the so called christian circle where they even take the name of christ and do so many things in the name of church in the name of god's word in the even in the name of gospel and they deceive many and sometimes when we listen to their preaching when they listen to their so called prophecies we can easily understand their aim is to please men their aim is to get more power their aim is maybe to get more wealth look at all the mega churches around us even in our own state or the churches where people like to go and listen or you go to youtubes or the social media where and check which churches have more likes and views most of these famous celebrity pastors and preachers most of them they are not true prophets in fact many of their teachings are contrary to god's word and they continue to engage in preaching and even in the ministry in order to become more famous or in order to accumulate more wealth so at the expense of the truth at the expense of god's word they try to please men they try to win the applause of men and that's very prominent even in our times and that's one reason we as believers should have great discernment whom we listen every day of our life which church we go maybe in social media which videos you like you know now is very easy you go and like it you share it you put it in your whatsapp status and promote it and whom you are liking whom you are sharing whose messages you are promoting all this matters and if we are promoting false teachers of this world who seek honor from men who live to please men we are also playing a part in promoting their false teachings if we are part of a church where the pastors or the leaders are promoting wrong teachings and seeking honor from men and going against god's word and god's truth even the offerings that we put in that church it is not used for god's glory they most likely all these leaders of these cultic groups or so called prophets of this world they use it for their own self interest maybe to build their own empire in the name of christ and in the name of gospel so one main character of this false prophet is to attract attention to themselves to please men so that they will be famous they will be well known and people will follow them they will have more adherents to hear and to promote what they want to teach and they also come in their own name here jesus says if another shall come in his own name him he will receive verse 43 second part so when we look at their teachings we can understand that they are not sent by god or godly men they may be taking jesus name but ultimately they are self sent and they are promoting their own ideas you know most of the cultic groups in this world they are made in that way where it is all focused on one celebrity founder or person who started that movement and sometimes even in good churches there is a tendency that we give more importance to the founders of the churches or the founders of the ministries who started the church and sometimes it go to the extent that in churches 
instead of church focusing on Christ and his name and his glory sometimes they keep their founder's name everywhere photo and you go to their church everywhere the founder's writings is promoted his photos are there there will be special days to commemorate his birth his death what he did and there is less preaching about christ and his ministry so such people they are there to use ministry to make a name for themselves and they are promoting their own name in the name of preaching or in the name of god's name and in fact jesus in many other portions in the gospel also gives us clear warning to avoid such teachers to avoid false prophets they may even claim that they follow lord they may even take the name of jesus they may even do miracles in jesus name but then in the last day the lord will reveal the motives and the thoughts of all such false prophets in this world and the lord will say i never knew you i think we will be surprised when we go to heaven many we thought will be in heaven may not be there many who took god's name christ's name and many who are well known in christian circles we think that they are doing god's work but it will be a surprise where maybe on the judgment day the lord will reveal their motives we cannot hide that from god we can deceive the people around us we can get the applause of people and we can get a lot of honor from men but we cannot deceive god our heavenly father and there is a day where god will expose all such false prophets and all false teachers and when we look at the bible we can see faithful servants of god faithful prophets of god whom god sent and the true prophets of god they are not here to seek honor from men they are here to seek honor from god in the verse 44 in the second part we will read that seek not the honor that cometh from god only those who are true prophets those who are true messengers of god they seek the honor that comes from god and that is not an easy ministry that the lord has entrusted to true prophets when we look at the bible especially in the old testament we can see the the prophets whom god sent whom god has called and separated to minister among god's people they had to do their ministry with lot of trials and with lot of opposition even the israelites who were called and separated by god as men of god as people of god they were the leading people in persecuting the prophets how difficult was their ministry we can see godly men were thrown into pit they were they were killed even they were mocked and lot of murmuring against them it was not easy to stand for christ and announce what god has told them and sometimes the prophets in the old testament we can see they had a calling where they have to even minister to great leaders like kings whom the lord has appointed and sometimes the word they have from god is totally against what the king like to hear it understanding their role and what god has given the responsibility they were always supposed to go and preach what god has told them to do and sometimes that brings anger of the kings and the rulers of the land and they were killed for preaching the truth but true prophets they always sought god and his glory not the honor of men not even the honor of kings where they served and they were willing to even lay down their life for the cause of preaching what god has told them to do so true prophets they always seek honor from god and true prophets are truly called and sent by god and they stick to the mission that the lord has given to them they stick to the words that the lord has committed to them while they prophesy or while they preach god's word even in the church today we as pastors 
our responsibility is to honor god and his word while we engage in his ministry when we preach god's word let us ensure that we do it for god's honor not to make a name for ourselves let us ensure that we preach as sent by god and we preach in his name so that his name will be honored and glorified even among god's people and we can see god sent many such prophets even in the old testament we can see a great prophet whom the lord has sent the israelites treated him as one of the greatest prophet whom the lord has sent among their midst and when jesus came to this earth ministering to the people the israelites many especially the teachers of god's law they had a habit of comparing jesus teaching with the great prophet whom they adore whom they respect a lot and there is none other than moses himself and when we look at his life we can see how god has chosen him as a faithful servant of god called out to be a true prophet of god and we can see how the lord used him to call out that people especially to form a nation to give them the law the 10 commandments and also even to liberate them from bondage even to give liberty to the people of god even from the hand of egyptians how the lord has called moses to accomplish this task but false teachers they have a habit where they like to claim that they follow moses or they follow good prophets in the bible they are teaching exactly what they have thought but actually they twist their message the pharisees and the scribes who lived at that time they were of that sort they had great reverence for moses they like to say we follow moses we study what moses had taught us but it twisted the message of moses the teaching that moses has given to them the important teaching the most important teaching that moses gave to them they forgot that they sidelined it and started to emphasize on the minor aspects of the law and they even start to teach people that by obedience of the law they can be saved instead of bringing people to focus on the messiah the lord jesus christ which moses also thought they became as birds of minor laws in the bible where they deceived many people promising them salvation by obeying god's law when we look at moses we can see how god has used him as a minister of god to bring god's law to us the 10 commandments that we read or we may even know it by heart it was given through moses and when the lord has given these commandments the lord expected people to understand their sinfulness through the law of god and then by understanding their sinfulness through the law that the lord gave through moses and through other prophets they were supposed to look for salvation in lord jesus christ that was the message of moses so god used moses in a way to bring great awareness of sin among the people of god among the israelites so these laws that the lord gave through moses were not supposed to take the people out of correct teachings and bring them to the wrong teachings where they get a salvation or a false offer of salvation is promised where they will obey the law of god and they can be saved and many in the old testament they twisted the teachings of moses and came up with this idea that oh i i obey all these laws i am better than others when we compare ourselves with others who claim to be the people of god i am better than them because i obey more laws than them i keep all the sacraments that the lord has given through moses so in that way because i am better than others i can be in heaven that is a twisted understanding of what god has taught us through moses and even through prophets in the old testament the lord has given us 
the law through Moses so that through the law we have true awareness of sin. Through the law we understand our sinfulness and we go to Christ for salvation. That's the purpose for which God gave us the law through Moses. And that's why in some places the word of the Lord describes the function of the law as having a function of accusation, having a function of accusing us for the sins that we have committed, for the wrongs that we have committed in our life. Even Jesus here says, Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father, verse 45. There is one that accuses you, even Moses in whom you trust. Moses as a minister of God giving the law to the people, when we look at our own life and compare our life with the laws that the Lord has given through the servants like Moses, we can come to the conclusion that, oh, I am an unworthy person. And the law is always there to accuse us because we don't meet the standard of the law. The same God who gave the law to Moses also demands that we must fulfill it perfectly. If we want to be righteous in front of God, according to the law, based on the law. In James we read, if we fall short in one aspect of the law, if we violate one law, we have failed in fulfilling the requirements of the whole law. So who can stand in front of God and say, I fulfilled all the law? You take the law and compare your life with the law of God, we can even see how far, how far we fall short from the standard of God. If there is any way in which a salvation is offered to us through obedience of the law, we all will be doomed. Because we all don't meet that standard. When we look at our own life, we can see how far we fall from the standards of God's law. Even today before the prayer, we read especially on the Christian Sabbath, fourth commandment that the Lord gave through Moses. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. It is a law that the Lord has given for the people of God. One day among the seven days, we have to keep us holy for worship. And when we examine our life in the light of that one commandment, the fourth commandment, which tells us to honor the Lord's day, honor the day of worship. When we examine our life in the light of that, that itself we will fail. Who can come here and say, I follow the Sabbath. I honor every Lord's day as the Lord expects in the law of God. None of us can stand in front of God and say, oh, I fulfill the fourth commandment as the word of the Lord expects us. And that's why even today, after reading the law, we were not praying to God that, Oh Lord, I am fulfilling it. I have did it all in the right way. I have fulfilled the fourth commandment. The reminder to honor the Sabbath day, the Christian Sabbath. But in our prayers, we were acknowledging that, Lord, we have failed in this. We have failed to honor the Lord's day. We have failed to honor the Christian Sabbath. Forgive us. We failed. There is a day where he will punish us for all the violations of God's law. And the punishments revealed to us, especially through Moses, especially to the nation of Israel, even reveals to us the seriousness of God's justice whereby he punishes us. Even in the earth, even in Israel as a nation, if death penalty was a punishment for violating the Sabbath commandment or violating the commandment not to commit adultery, how great will be the punishment when we face the judgment of God? And that's why the word of the Lord reminds us, if we go and stand in front of God's judgment seat, we all deserve eternal punishment because we don't meet the standards of God. The law is there to accuse us. 
the law is there to condemn us the law is there to pronounce death upon us the law is there to bring curse over us and the pharisees and the scribes instead of calling people to look to christ instead of relying on the law of god for salvation to look to the promise of christ the judaizers they twisted the scripture and offered a salvation for them offered a kind of righteousness to them based on the obedience of the law and they took moses as an important figure or important leader to support their teachings we have moses we have the prophets we have the law of the lord and these are the laws that we follow and we know we will be right with god because we obey moses law it sounds very similar to how we hear the promise of salvation offered by many churches and religions around us and that's one way we can get more followers that's one way we can attract more people to follow our teachings to support us and that was exactly the message of the pharisees and the scribes people like to hear that you know do good or you fail in one aspect maybe you come and do some religious thing then cover it up it's like you had a serious fall and you apply some bandaid thinking that the problem is solved when you require a surgery maybe the so called medicines of this world where they promise eternal life but their teaching is shallow where they offer hope of salvation by obedience by religious works and jesus while he was ministering understood this is not what moses has taught no one can be saved by the obedience of the law and in fact jesus clearly tells us through these passages that even moses himself spoke about christ moses was not only a person who gave the law of god and showed to us the punishment that is awaiting all sinners through moses god also announced the great prophecies concerning lord jesus christ how a sinner how an accused person can be found right in the eyes of god and we can see such prophecies given to us through moses himself in deuteronomy chapter 18 18 we can see the promise that the lord will raise a prophet among themselves who will bring salvation to them who will be the true redeemer even the redemptive work that lord did through moses where by he was an instrument in the hands of god to redeem them from the bondage of egypt in fact was a reminder to them that a greater redeemer is coming one who is greater than moses is coming who will redeem us from all our spiritual bondage all our spiritual darkness and that is none other than lord jesus and we can see even in numbers and in other portions of the scripture where even through the serpent bronze serpent that he raised people were asked to look to the serpent so that their sins will be forgiven they can escape from the judgment of god and through those the lord was teaching them that you want salvation you must look to christ you must look to his work the lamb that is prepared to be slain from the foundation of the world and it is only through him that we can have true salvation and all the sacrifices in the old testament when people came to the temple to offer sacrifices when the blood was shed all those pointed to the greater work of the messiah which was already revealed to the people that by his blood all our sins will be forgiven it is not by the blood of the animals the gods and the bulls it is by the blood of christ that our sins are forgiven it is by looking to him only that we can be truly saved and even the sacraments that the lord has 
instituted to them in the Old Testament. All those sacraments, they pointed to the work of Lord Jesus. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 to 4, we can see this even recorded there where Christ's name is explicitly mentioned. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 to 4. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And they were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. In all the provisions that the Lord has given them. The manna. The water that came from the rock. All the spiritual provisions that they received. In fact, those came to them through Christ, out of the grace that flowed through Christ and his work. The circumcision, the Passover that they participated, the Jews considered as important sacraments, all these pointed to the work of Christ. And as new covenant believers, you know, the portion that we read, we can also say, we also partake of that same spiritual food, the same spiritual manna and the same spiritual drink. Of course, we don't partake in the same way like how the old covenant people partook of it. The Lord has instituted baptism and the Lord's Supper. Where these are not signs where blood is shed. Because Christ has already shed his blood. But the same truth of Christ's work, Christ's sacrifice on the cross, the same spiritual food, the same spiritual drink is offered to us in Christ, to us. Even to the people in the Old Testament, people who followed Moses at that time, it was the same spiritual food and the drink that they offered. They had to receive it by faith, putting faith in the promise of the Messiah. Then only that will become effectual for their salvation. And we are thankful that the Lord sent, as prophesied in the Old Testament, as predicted by prophets like Moses, in the fullness of time, Lord Jesus came, where he truly fulfilled all the promises in the scriptures, exactly as predicted by Moses and other prophets. And he laid down his life for our salvation, whereby we who are believers in the new covenant, we can say our Savior has came in fulfillment of all the prophecies in the Old Testament that the Lord has given to the prophets like Moses. So if you truly believe in the Old Testament, if you truly believe in the prophecies of the true prophets in the Old Covenant, then you have no choice but to believe in Christ. Those who rejected Christ and claimed the name of Moses saying, we are following Moses, we uphold Moses' law. In fact, they were twisting the laws that the Lord has given and making a religion on their own, a religion devoid of Christ. And that's what is happening in the world. Everybody likes to follow some religion. Everybody likes to be a religious leader. But any religion that is devoid of Christ cannot promise any hope of salvation to any of us. And that's why Jesus said, if you believe in Moses' writings, definitely you will believe in me. Definitely you will believe even my words. Because he revealed Christ. He talked about Christ. Even Jesus himself Open the scriptures and from the old covenant, from the portions revealed to us through the old covenant prophets, how those all point to Christ. He himself has pounded to the people at that time, especially to the Pharisees and the scribes, rebuking them how all those prophets spoke about Christ and his coming. But sadly, the people who lived at that time, majority of them chose to reject Christ. And the law still remains as an accuser for all of them. 
because they put their trust in men. They put their trust in the teachings of Moses, thinking that Moses can save them. But Moses himself declared to us that it is only Christ who can save us. So everybody who take the name of Christ don't think that they are coming with the true offer of salvation to us. You put your hope in them, their name will perish, our life also will perish. But if you truly put our trust in Christ, if you truly put our hope in the finished work of Lord Jesus, we can have true hope that we will be saved. In fact, the law will not be an accuser for all such people. Because Christ has fulfilled every demands of the law on behalf of us. So that the law will not be an accuser. And we will be accepted as God's children. Because Christ has fulfilled all the demands of the law. The law is no more an accuser. And Christ also took the punishment. All the punishments that the Lord has revealed to us in the scriptures, especially in the Old Covenant. In fact, we can see Christ himself taking the punishment of the Lord, the curse of the Lord. He became a curse so that we can be considered blessed. So that we can be accepted in the sight of God. The curse of the law was taken by Lord Jesus himself. It is not Moses who took it. It is Jesus himself who took the curse of the law on behalf of us and went through a terrible death so that we can be redeemed. So let us don't put our hope for salvation in the men of this world, even men who claim to follow Christ, men who say they are promising salvation and then twist the message to offer or give a way of salvation by works. Let us always look to Christ and let us rightly understand the message of the Old Covenant whereby the Old Testament scriptures prophesy concerning this Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, who is going to come. And if we put our hope in Him, in His name, we will not be ashamed. Today morning when I was teaching basic Bible knowledge class as part of our catechism class. We were today studying about the topic of Bible. I think some of you are here who already attended the class. And in that basic Bible knowledge lesson, this interesting statement was there where it talks about what is the theme of the Bible? What is Bible all about? It says Bible is God's word. But what is the main message of the Bible? What does Old Testament teach us? What is the message in the New Covenant, New Testament? How can we summarize it in one word? And this was very nice to read this. It was put in a very nice way. I am not sure whether it was taken from some other work or some other writing, but I like to read that. The Old Testament message is, the Savior is coming. The New Testament message declares, the Savior has come. Both Testaments confirm the Savior is coming again. It is the same. Moses and the prophets in the Old Covenant, they all said this. The Savior is going to come to save us from sins. And the apostles and those who wrote the scriptures, Jesus' disciples, they said, the Savior has come. And the prophets in the both testaments, they equally declare that he is going to come again. That is the sum of the whole scripture. So let us ask messengers of God, let us as servants of God preach the same message where we give a savior to the world through the scriptures who came to die for our sins, to redeem us from the curse of the law, who took the punishment of the law on behalf of us so that we will not be accused, but we will be redeemed and be considered as the children of God. May Lord bless us with these words.